I'm Zach Stone. Welcome to the Zach Stone Crypto Channel. Last week's episode was a little bit more controversial than I intended it to be for the launch of this channel. So let's cover a couple of goals and a few caveats, and then we'll get into the second half and how to set up your fall mining node. So the first thing to keep in mind are what are the goals of this channel. First, I intend to do how-to videos in a little more technical level. This is not financial advice. This is not advice on how to get rich quick using crypto. I don't have any idea how to do that or I wouldn't be recording these things. I would have a totally different day job if I was good at day trading, I promise. Second, this video is supposed to be getting you from a working baseline configuration into a working fall of minor. So last week we did something a little bit unusual, a little bit experimental. You do not have to follow that to get here. The important thing to know is that you have the right hardware to run SGX and a valid hardware configuration. I'm not going to go through all the different configurations that are possible to run fallen nodes. There are plenty of guides online that you can find for you know what valid hardware works with this. You can also check on our community forums and in our Discord. All I can vouch for is that if you follow this procedure, which is about 17 steps long, you're going to have a working testnet miner at the end of it. Now, here are the caveats. Caveat number one, I can only vouch for my hardware, my iron. I bought some things for Black Friday last year, uh, including an i7-9700K and an ASRock B365M Pro motherboard. Uh, it's currently running 4.40 BIOS, which I know is out of date. And so there are going to be some stumbles as we go through this. I'm still waiting for ASRock to get me the right microcode version in the BIOS. So I can only vouch for my own configuration. If you have different hardware, if you have different experiences, all I can say is that this is mostly to shepherd you through the process, not to uh, address every detailed possible troubleshooting that you're going to have along the way. The goal here, again, is education. And if this works for me and this process gets me through what it takes to connect to testnet and you're able to connect to the testnet as well after doing these steps, then fantastic. When mainnet launches, we'll both have the knowledge that it takes to start our own mining for actual fa second caveat is time so as i am sitting here recording this in the evening on valentine's day my wife angry at me somewhere i want you all to understand that this works for me right now but i know that there are some things that i'm going to show you today that will keep this miner from working on the main net when it launches i also know that there are some things that may change that haven't even been seen yet that will keep this from working in the future. So I can only tell you what works for me today. In fact, last week I, I recorded all this stuff. It took me days. It was days of recorded material. And when I went through what it takes to set up the miner, I didn't have a cohesive batch of videos that I thought I could string together in a story that you would understand. So I'm actually reshooting all of those videos today to guide you through the process, hopefully in two or three sittings. And the third thing to note is, again, last week's video is extraordinarily experimental. If you followed the KVM guide and you think that's really cool, cool, I appreciate that. Um, but you have to view that from an experimental lens. There may come a day in the near future when Fala says, we don't want that to work on our mainnet, and they change things so that it does not. So with all the fine print out of the way, Let's dive into the technical details, which is what this channel is going to strive to provide you uh, on an ongoing basis. So here you can see we have our, our shutoff VM, and I'm going to try to do this in three takes, or three sections, I should say, um, going through each one and troubleshooting along the way, just in case there is a little uh, discrepancy in what's going on. I, I don't intend to cut this unless I get really down in the weeds on troubleshooting something uh, because this process is a little convoluted, um, not going to lie. It is a little, uh, is a little bit to follow. So I'm going to try to do this as three takes. There, there are two points in here where um, there's just too much time is going to pass to make it real time. Uh, but you know, let's uh, let's change our background here so that we know this is the VM. 
and let's go with eh, let's go with this leaf. All right, so this is our this is our virtual machine, and this is where I'm going to install Fallout. Now, again, I am I'm forced to explain that this is an experiment, right? Um, the purpose of this video is really to to walk you through the steps of setting up uh, a follow miner. Um, it's not the VM or anything that I've done uh, here, so you know, refer to previous video, and also refer to the fact that that is experimental and may not be supported by Fala in the long term as as uh, you know part of their project long term. Maybe to say we don't want people running it like this. So let's grab a couple of mirrors here. And obviously the, the key thing to start with is you want an environment that's going to succeed um, out of the box. So I'm going to take EvoWise. I already know that EvoWise is a uh, one of the faster places for me to get to from Hawaii here. And uh, maybe I'll take that one. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Well, how do you do? There's a Hawaii uh, index. Great. Okay. Update the cache. And this should make our patching go a little faster. So I'll probably speed this up um, as it goes through the patches. Alright. Apply the updates. Okay, here's the screen we're waiting for. Let's restart. And I'm gonna get it to where we can maybe resize this window a bit. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's go down here to Command prompt. Um, so now that we have this up to the current, you know, up to date status, there are a few things that I put in any of these given environments to make sure that I can personally uh, use them. And so one of those things is Vim. Um, I'm a Vim guy. Uh, you know, that can be Nano if if you are uh, prefer that. Uh, screen is just super handy. Uh, these by default mint doesn't install SSH, so open SSH server. Uh, it's something if I want to get to this remotely that I'm going to need to install. Oh, HTOP, right. All right, so those are those are my comfort uh, utilities here in the uh, in the Ubuntu ecosystem. Um, in addition to that, we're going to need a couple of things for follow to work. Um, Docker and Docker Compose, I believe, are going to be required. And then a utility called JQ, um, which is a Java a JSON query or JavaScript query utility. So uh, this is used in the uh, scripts, in the mining scripts, to be able to parse out some information. So let's kick those off. Yes, please. All right, that's gonna be a little better. So if we do, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna download uh, the SGX drivers. So our first step is to prepare the environment. Our second step is to go find those Intel drivers. Download Intel SGX drivers. And what we're looking for is the URL that starts with 0 0.1. Weirdly enough, um, you should be able to find this in Google. I was the last few times. Uh, maybe, maybe not here. There we go. So the 01.org, where does this drop us? If you can't parent directory, Linux. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's get in Linux 213. This is what we want. 
and uh, nope, that's not right. It's two fourteen. Maybe we want to go here, SGX Linux. I see a recent date that there. And two one three. There we go. And distro. Ubuntu 20. Okay, so this is the guy that I want. Um, this is the decap driver. If your BIOS supports this, uh, you should do this. It should be noted. I know that uh, I have an old BIOS and I'm trying to get a new one from ASRock. And there's a microcode version that I need to get uh, that, that won't be supported. I, I currently have an old microcode version that won't be supported in mainnet. So I know this driver doesn't install properly and this driver still does. So I'm going to go grab the link uh, here, copy link location. And let's make a little follow directory. And we'll download this driver file. Okay, so I need to install this. Okay, now this is going to install the SGX driver. And when this is done in this VM, I can test the success of this if there is an SGX, an ISGX uh, device driver, and there is. So I can see this here in this machine. So I know that I'm going to, well, I have some reasonable confidence that I'm, I'm gonna succeed at my Fala install. You may still fail somewhere further down the road. As I said, I already know that my BIOS is out of date on this motherboard. And so, you know, there's, there's sort of questionable support. In testnet, I'm still su a supported device, but if I don't patch my uh, BIOS before mainnet, I'm, I'm probably not going to be allowed to participate. So you have to make sure that, you know, all your hardware is, is cool before this. Okay, so that was step two, uh, download and install SGX drivers. Step three, get the solo mining scripts. Okay, so now we're gonna go out here and we're going to go to the follow project. I'm gonna kill off these previous tabs. Participate, miner, and our mining tutorial. Uh, it's all follow solo mining scripts. Okay. So it's gonna have us do this, but I don't think that this works by the way. So let's see, let's see if they've updated this. This looks a little bit updated from the other day when I last tried it. Are we lucky? No. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to you're going to want to grab the URL here. This is a this is a little tip that I've been able to figure out to so this GitLab solo mining scripts. Okay. So snag that part of the URL copy, and we're going to go here out to GitHub and download it anyway. So here you can say, I want to download this code. I can download it as a zip. You can see that it gives you this uh, uh, URL. I think that's maybe the URL that they tried to uh, put in there. Okay, so now if I go back to our command prompt, I have those mining scripts. So let's unzip that. And what I want to do is uh, sudo sgx enable. All right, it's already enabled on the system. 
Uh, we already have our, our driver. And then we're going to install these scripts. Oops. Okay. English, because I'm English. So we now have the follow command line. All right. So that was step three. Now we have our mining scripts in place. Um, by the way, those install uh, over here. So, so by default, this is where they go. Now, one of the things that the instructions um, didn't say the other day is to configure this JSON uh, configuration, right? So what we want to do is configure that before we go any further. So that's going to have things in it like your node name and your key. So let's let's configure the node name first. Looks like my IP is 192.168.1107. What we want to do is take that IP address and put it into that config JSON along with a name. So All right, so our node name here today, we're gonna to go with Ocean Blue. Oops. There's a Vim guy, you know, misusing Vim. And 004, 192, 168.1.107. I'm gonna leave the mnemonic empty for the moment because we don't have one. <clears throat> and we're gonna leave it at that. So, what I want to do next is uh, start the node. So sudo fala init. Well, actually, let's let's look at what the command line utility gives us, right? So I want to sudo fala install. Now you'll see I have this system does not support. Now this is a this is an error message that I'm getting because uh, of a variety of factors here, and that's fine. That's fine for now. I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of troubleshooting around this. So if what I do is follow sudo follow sgx test, it'll tell me where I'm failing here. Okay, so now it's going to download these images and test things anyway for how things should be. All right. So here you can see I have this group out of date. And this means that I don't have the right microcode to run this as of today, right? That weirdly doesn't mean that I can't join the testnet. I can still join the testnet in this configuration. So if you noticed at the beginning here, it downloads a lot of uh, what it takes to run follow. And so I'm going to use that to continue running. I'm going to pull down the latest version from the network. I don't know that it's different from what SGX test is doing, uh, but it seems to be slightly. Okay. And then we're going to start the node. So this part where it says waiting for full sync, this is going to take a long time. Um, now you might wonder, okay, well, I have a little bit of uh, time on my hands, how do we verify that this is working? So the first thing that you can do, let's start another uh, command prompt here. The first thing we can look at in the background, while oh, this is running, are the logs. And so here you can see it's kicking off um, joining the blockchain. So I have one peer. Um, this is the target node. It tells you how much bandwidth is getting used. 
here you can see we're at you know 1321 out of over a million blocks so this is going to take a long time one of the things that you can do in the meantime is you can go look at the telemetry another way to verify that this is working telemetry.polkadot.io find our Vala POC3 and you can search for your node Ocean Blue 004 and you can see this is where we're syncing to in my case I can also do this uh, it's not letting me today um, normally it would uh, show a little ping out here on uh, on Hawaii Island, but uh, today I'm not so lucky, so. Okay, so while we wait for our node to catch up, let's take care of all of the stuff we need to do uh, to get our wallets set up in any usable state. So here, uh, I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. So we're gonna start with this Polkadot extension. We're gonna add this in. I have a Firefox installation here. I'm gonna add this wallet to it. Okay, and now I have Polkadot Wallet. So once we have our extension, we're going to go to Follow Network, Polkadot.js Explorer, and we're going to go to Accounts. Okay, so I have this account. Let's see uh, if it'll, or I have this uh, extension. Let's see if it'll connect here. Yes, we'll allow this application access been detected in your browser no accounts have been injected so I have no Paula accounts here on this browser let's add an account now this is going to be the mnemonic obviously I'm going to blur this out for now so here's account number one so it's important to keep all of this information very very safe I highly recommend uh, using like a dedicated USB stick to keep this information you don't want anybody else to know these seeds okay so this is your money, this is your best security practices should all be in play here. All right, so I'm going to click that, it's copied. I'm going to say that I have this saved safely. And the next thing we do, all right, I give this a name. So I'm gonna call this Ocean Blue 004 stash, okay? And I'm gonna grab the uh, wallet address, and then I'm gonna create a password for this. Uh, I'm not gonna use this generated password. I'm gonna create a separate one entirely. Okay, so there's my password. And I'm gonna make sure that I have that saved very, very safely as well. Okay, so here you go. This is what you're gonna see uh, once you've created this successfully. Now, if you save this, uh, it'll create a backup file, a JSON file. Again, would highly recommend that being, you know, sent to a USB stick, not attached to the internet, uh, or at least as attached as infrequently as humanly possible. So save. All right. And we're going to save that file. Okay. So that's number one. Um, so you can see we have this as a stash account. Um, I'm going to add another account. We're going to need a controller account. So here we're going to do the exact same steps. I have saved it. I'm going to grab the account itself. Controller. Okay. Going to get another password. Never want to reuse passwords, guys. Best practice. So this is a separate password entirely. And next and save okay so now i have two accounts here so you'll notice that on the testnet we don't have any fa so the next step is to get tfa 
So to obtain TIFA, we need to go to this uh, swap site, this TIFA swap. Um, I'm going to connect wallet, and in this case, I'm connecting my MetaMask wallet, not my Polkadot wallet. This is an important distinction. So, so far, PHA is an ERC20 token. Uh, that means it's going to be interoperable between many blockchains, between Polkadot and Ethereum. But for now, the token is available only on Ethereum to like do stuff with. So we're going to burn tokens. I'm going to burn 0 0.01 of these tokens. This amount is restricted by this site. It's going to burn out of this, which is uh, my Ethereum wallet. I'm going to click here to burn this. It's going to talk to you about the testnet. Okay, and now I have my MetaMask pop-up window. So we're going to confirm here this transaction. It's going to cost me like 14 real bucks. Uh, and that burn is going to hit the blockchain. So we may have to wait a few minutes for that to happen. No, it happened in just a few seconds. Okay, now here's the transaction ID. So what we need to do here is we're gonna snag this transaction ID and our claim tokens. Oh, it already, already puts it in there. And here we have our recipient address. Now this is going to be our stash account address for Fala. So the first wallet ID that we created is gonna be there. We're gonna claim that. We're gonna get another MetaMask pop-up. So I'm gonna sign this transaction and we're off. So the blockchains are going to settle this. And what you'll see is, there we go. We have successfully claimed the tokens. And now we have a thousand TIFA in our testnet. So this is the testnet FALA. So that's a good start. I'm sure the extension has some accounts. Uh, yes, I, I have not imported uh, the accounts to my wallet. So I'm gonna do that now actually. So let's import this from a JSON file. I'm gonna grab these two JSON files that we just downloaded. So there's one. Password for this file should be our password. For that account. And we're gonna add the other one. Oops. As well. We're going to use that password here. All right, so now I have my two accounts um, inside of my wallet and my extension wallet. Um, probably good to know that what I really want here is to make sure that these are on the Fallen Network. And I don't have that in here. Okay. So if I come here. So we're going to go to the settings page and have that injected. Update the metadata. Um, that's going to ask me something like this. Now, if I come here, I can see that these are on the Fallout POC network. Okay. So I have my two accounts. I have a little bit of FA to play with. Um, one of the things that I am unsure of in this is how much of this is necessary. I believe that I need a minimum of 100 in this controller account to be able to start mining. So I'm going to send that from my stash account to the controller account. And I'm gonna make that transfer. Sign and submit. So this is gonna ask me uh, in my wallet to sign this to make sure that uh, I really want to send this. So yes, I do. 
So I'm going to throw my password in here. I say remember this for 15 minutes. Just make the rest of this video a little easier. And then we should see that in a few seconds pop down to 100 on the second. All right. The next part of this is setting up the relationships between these accounts. And if you do this wrong, you won't be able to start mining. Uh, and again, the documentation is a little murky here. So we're going to go through this and hopefully you can follow along because, and, and you need to be careful. So if you confuse these two accounts and some of these steps, you're not going to be able to join the mining network. We need to bond the controller account to the stash account. Okay. And we do this by going to follow module and set stash controller. So this, when you see this nomenclature controller means that what you're putting down here is the controller account. And we're going to submit this tra transaction. Okay, here we go with the updated signature. And we're going to send that. So that should create the relationship between stash and controller. So once we've set the uh, stash controller, let's go to the controller. And we're going to set the uh, preferences, the commission. Uh, in this particular case, this is a whole number between 1 and 100. Uh, it's basically what you want to share with people who are staking versus your own mining. In this particular uh, test network situation, this doesn't matter because you're going to probably do all of your own uh, staking and mining from the same accounts. And this uh, is going to be your uh, payout target, which is going to be your stash. So from the controller, these, this is going to be the behavior of what mining looks like. I need the password for the controller account, which I also now want to remember for 15 minutes. As you can see, we're still waiting for uh, this sync up to happen. So what I want to do here, now that we've set up all of our stash accounts and our metadata settings on the blockchain, there is one last tiny configuration, the mnemonic that we need to put in here. So if I go to this config file again, I put in that last little bit. I need the controller mnemonic here. Okay, double check. All right, now that I know all of that is correct, I can go back to waiting for the sync up to finish and we'll be back in a bit. Okay, it looks like our synchronizing uh, completed a little bit ago. So the next step is to spin up pruntime and phost. And I have been gone long enough for this to log me out. Okay, now if I do sudo follow logs runtime. All right, looks like it is off to the races. And sudo follow start phost. All right, and for the ultimate question, all right, all three of these are running. So the next thing we need to do is look for the miner. So now that I have all of these three things somewhere on the blockchain, I should be able to see the miner as active. So let's go looking for it. 
So we're going to come out to our browser here and look at the Fala network um, to see if we can find our worker node. Did it register correctly? So we want to go under extrinsics. Oh, I'm sorry, chain state. We're going to go to chain state. Um, extrinsics is where you can put in the data, and this is where you check the data. So we want to actually check some data here, which is this worker state and our stash account. There you have it. Okay, so now we see the worker state here is free null. That's okay. We, we, this is normal for, for where we're at right here. Um, the next thing we want to change is let's, let's check the stash state uh, since we have the stash account up. Okay, and we see our controller account and our commissions. And let's go to the controller and set the, or verify the stash ID of the controller. Okay, and this is how we want this to look. So um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually snag this and I'm gonna go to a new tab and we're gonna get into um, changing a setting here. So extrinsics, now I actually do want this. We want the controller. We're gonna go to follow module, set or start mining. That's what I'm looking for. Now, this will tell the blockchain that we intend to start follow mining on this controller. All right, I actually have a little, little concern here. The free balance says 99, so this is less than 100. So. I'm gonna actually toss a few more fa into there now that I'm looking at this because I think you have to have a minimum of 100. So let's do, let's do that. Okay, and we will sign this. Oh, really, sign it? Okay, so now that should get me here. And if I go back to this tab, of the start mining, I'm gonna set that intention as well. Okay, we'll sign that one. Okay, so you see mining pending null. So now the next round is gonna start. I don't know exactly when the next round is gonna start. Um, I, I could calculate it, but I'm, I'm gonna be lazy here and just walk away. And now the final piece. So we can see that this uh, worker info has been updated that we're mining as of this block. So this update in the worker state says mining and then the block you started. And for our ultimate test of if we are participating in the test network, you have to come up here to fire two. This is part of the current race that is running until March. And oh, look at there, we have a few in our account. So everything is working perfectly. And that concludes this video. Hopefully you are able to put all these pieces together for yourself and get into the mining of Fala as well. Thanks for watching.